Hey, what's up? What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Iris the Virus channel. And let's talk about quiet quitting today. What is quiet quitting? According to Wiki, it says employees work within defined work hours and engage in work related activities solely within those hours, also referred to as acting your wage. It's not quite the same definition as I understood when I hear quiet quitting being mentioned in articles or the news. The discrepancy between the difference in definitions could come from the opposite sides of interpreting this concept. Basically, from an employee perspective, we're thinking I am setting a reasonable and healthy boundary between my work and my personal life. And to be honest with you, this should have been in place probably long before this term came popular. And then from the employer's perspective, they're interpreting quiet quitting, especially the term includes the word quitting. They're thinking slackers are just intentionally underperforming. So in other words, they're thinking employees are being lazy sack of potatoes. So that being said, why is this such a big deal? Why does everybody keep talking about this? Long story short, I blame the pandemic. The root of the panic came from an article on Gallup, which claims recent estimate that a full 50% of the workforce can be considered quiet quitters. So to quote an article on the Seattle Times talking about how companies are responding to this phenomenon. Quote, especially scary for leaders in the invisible nature of the trend, according to Granger. In a remote or hybrid environment, the classic signs that an employee is checked out like tardiness and absenteeism can be harder to spot. While their first reaction is often to blame quiet quitting on laziness, Granger said many come to realize that it's actually a management problem. There's even an artificial intelligence startup that claims to offer a solution analyzing emails and Slack messages to detect engagement, burnout, and turnover risk among employees. So if you read between the lines of these articles and you can tell it's all about control and that's exactly why employers are freaking out about quiet quitting, I think because humans are in nature love to be in control and especially companies whether if they admit it or not pandemic made it harder for them to track what their employees are doing or how productive their employees are so from their point of view they feel like they're losing control of their employees so when they first hear about quiet quitting and the first reaction is automatically panic right which is understandable at some level. But on the other hand, employees started working from home since the beginning of the pandemic. And so the lines between work and personal life start to blur. I used to have, I used to have a clear boundary where when my work stops and my personal life begins, and that's when I leave my computer at home and step into my car thinking thank god this day is over before i had to burn this motherfucker down today but now feels like i work the entire day from the moment i open my eyes until the moment i my head hits the pillow at night i'm sure i'm not the only one so drawing this quiet quitting boundary is employees last line of defense to safeguard their mental health However, right now, companies are in the upper hand again in terms of talent acquisition. What I mean is when you think about the revenue drops with the downturn of the economy, the stock drops, the supply chain issues, and then when you're talking about macro econ economics, there's inflation, there's the political uncertainties, all these things added up together. All the companies are struggling. So what do they do? 
the first trick in the book, right? Layoffs. And it's an employer, employer's market again. But the good news is I think this is temporary. Overall in talent acquisition, I personally think sustainably speaking, the supply is way lower than the demand and the demand is increasing regardless of the economy downturn. So how come they are still in the upper hand then? Because they have had it for so good for so long. They've been riding high since the recession of 09. So for the past de decade since 09, the boomers have been carrying the heavy lift in the workforce and with the millennials coming out of college, begging for the scraps of jobs, and they just have been in the superior positions for the longest time until recently, until right before the pandemic, in my opinion. And because, because of a lot of reasons, boomers started to retire. And then also with the great resignation from my generation. So we're talking the talent pool are being drained from both ends. And therefore the demand is going to be way way bigger than the supply in the long term that being said if during this economy downturn a lot of the companies are starting to do huge rounds of layoffs by the time this whole thing is over i'm hoping six months to a year they're going to find out that things are going to be a lot harder for them to rehire these talents back and they're going to be like whoa why why aren't anybody working for me even though i have no loyalty to my employees and i fired their lazy asses for a sign of economy downturn you can say sure i can work for you but this just got a whole lot more expensive so get in line so quiet quitting can temporarily having your head on the chopping board for the layoffs. This has been going on for as old as time, right? So if you if you look it up, it's been very common that the majority of the work or the majority of the production in any field, when you're talking about human productivity, it's the majority of the work has been done by a very small portion of the contributors and it's it and it's been concluded into uh, laws of physics like prices law or prices square root law or lot cuts law so there are many laws to there are many um, conclusions to describe this phenomenon um, so for example if you plot this graph of productivity as the uh, x-axis and then the y-axis being the percentage of the contributors to the to the work and then what you'll see on the graph is a something resembles a exponential decay so what it means is on the small end of the axis you have a uh, small amount of work being done by majority of the contributors and then on the other side of the x-axis you have the majority of the work being done by very very limited amount of contributors to give you an example i want to quote jordan b peterson's book called 12 rules for life quote majority of the scientific papers are published by a very small group of scientists a handful of authors sell all the books and then also just four classical composers, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, and Tchaikovsky wrote almost all the music that the world knows and loves, end quote. As your company grows, incompetence grows exponentially, but competence grows linearly. This, this is very common and it's well known. With the percentage of the contributors being not being able to contribute much work, obviously you're going to have the workers who can be defined as quiet quitters right they're just naturally not going to produce a lot of work and also if you think about it you know who i'm talking about you know 
you know exactly who in your group around you or a source you have heard that who is who is quite quitting in your everyday life it is so common right and so for example i have known a guy from my previous work legend has it that he apparently didn't tell anybody that he decided to quit instead of putting in his two weeks notice he just decided to not tell anybody that he actually quit so what happened was it took the company over six months to realize that this person actually quit working here obviously eventually they fired him but he at that point he's already been collecting paychecks and working somewhere else or whatever he does when he's not working right so after all that i know you're here to hear what i have to say who cares about what the professionals have to say right let's hear a random person on the internet all right gather around um so assuming your family life personal life and mental health are not at risk at all there that's not within the scope of our discussion here assume everything is fine and i'm just talking if you're just wondering why do i have to work extra load why do i need to put it put in the extra hours is it really worth it i think it depends on what you want out of your job if you want to excel if you want to exceed and step on some heads to get ahead i'm sure you already know don't quite quit because you can't you, there's no shortcut in life right but just for us mere mor mortals i'm talking with the pip culture with the burnout um, plaguing the workplace i think the price to pay to be the top performer can be too high at times um, again it depends on the companies depends on your micro environment your micro situation but in general and then in this economy i i would say not to intentionally be lazy and be underperforming because it's really easy to spot the lazy person on the team what i mean is when sometimes it your work requires a little bit of extra effort or a little bit of overtime so be it but when the slow time period comes take the chance to relax take the chance to slack and that being said because of the layoffs because of the current situation with the economy i would be a little worried to be a quiet quitter not in the sense that drawing a, a healthy boundary between your work and personal life but in the sense of intentionally underperforming that's all however there there are always exceptions to the rules if you are on if you fall within the following two categories i am very envious of you because you should quite quit all day if you want so one if so first of all you can quite quit if you hit financial independence and also if you're a loser like me would choose to keep working even though you hit financial independence so my husband and i always talk about this what happens if we actually hit financial independence we actually quit our jobs and so i thought about it I, you know what i don't think i would because that at that point working would be an ideal situation you can just say fuck off to all the bullshit part of your job and only do the part that you really really enjoy doing for your job isn't that the best <laughs> and then the second category is that if you are already planning on quitting and you're already having something lined up and if you want to see a complete list of the reasons why you should quit your job drop a comment and i'll make it i'll do anything for a few clicks yes i'm desperate what no you you have issues so anyways i hope you enjoyed my rant on quiet quitting i know there is already a bunch of content on quiet quitting but i just want to share my two cents and hopefully you're either entertained or i don't know maybe off chance you're inspired 
Either way, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.